In a little town in Italy, there lived a very humble brother. Amongst the tall white buildings and crawling green plants, he could be seen walking about and going from door to door, begging for money and food, so that he could support his monastery. His little wicker basket was filled to the brim with coins, flour, fruit, and loaves of bread. The people of the town loved very much to see Brother Gerard when he was sent out to gather alms, and they always were happy to give what little they had to him. Brother Gerard, here are my earrings. They are made of gold, one woman exclaimed, hastily dropping her earrings into the basket. Father will be very pleased. God bless you. Brother Gerard replied, a little smile widening on his face. Brother Gerard, please take these buttons off my coat. A man dropped in a handful of very expensive buttons, clinking and clanking as they rolled down to the bottom of the already full basket. Here, Brother Gerard, this necklace was very expensive, and this here, this is golden thread. Brother Gerard stood very still amongst the growing crowd, his smile growing only a little softer as the people of the town asked for prayers in exchange for their gifts. Brother Gerard assured them that God would reward their generosity. Brother Gerard! He felt a tug on the bottom of his black habit and peered down. A little crowd of children had gathered round him, and one of the boys was clutching his habit with one of his little hands, the thin material very crinkled beneath the boy's fingers. Immediately Brother Gerard crouched down and placed his full basket on the dirt ground, his hands resting on his knees. What can I do for you, my friends? He looked down at the boy, down the tip of his thin nose, and raised one of his black eyebrows questioningly. He reached one of his hands up, wiping a smudge of dirt off the boy's cheek, and sighed as the child tried to step away in an attempt to keep his dirty face. May I ask you a question? Brother Gerard laughed. He would have pointed out that in asking, the boy had asked a question, though he chose against it. Instead, he nodded his head. Of course you may ask me a question and I will do my very best to answer you. The boy screwed up his nose as he thought. Brother Gerard, why do you have to ask for food and money? Why doesn't God just give it to you? Brother Gerard quieted before he grabbed the handle of his wicker basket and held it up, inspecting it with a very concerned expression. The boy stepped forward to look at it, too, and then the rest of the children crowded around to see what had so suddenly confused the brother. Is something the matter? Is the bread moldy? Maybe the cheese is no good. No, no, none of those things, Brother Gerard said seriously. I'm just trying to understand what you mean, because, see, God is giving me so many things right here in this basket. Bread, cheese, fruits, coins. Mrs. Abate even gave us two bambolini, and she said that they have a yummy cream inside. I think Father Superior would be very pleased with that. No, the boy insisted. Why do you have to beg? Why can't you just ask God to give you a big feast every night? Hmm. The brother hummed and sat down his alms basket. I see. Hmm, I see. I suppose we could all pray for a big feast every night, but what could a fat brother's? We would be so tempted to gluttony and so slow that we could not pray or do much of anything except think of full bellies. But this way I call upon your charity— and I learn humility. Sometimes it's very hard to come and ask for more things from you, but when I see how charitable these people in town are, it makes my heart very happy, and so it must make God's heart very happy. Do you not think? 
Is it not God who says, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me? Are not the brothers living hidden away from the world, so that they may serve God with their whole heart and whole soul? The boy seemed to consider what Brother Gerard had said, but he did not seem satisfied. I do not understand why we must give away our things, the boy said decidedly. Why would God give them to us if we were not meant to just give them all away? Because all belongs to God. Brother Gerard chuckled. And God must teach us. Besides that, we must all get to heaven, and God teaches you humility and charity by urging you to help us brothers, who have so very little. And we are very happy having very little, but we still must eat, and that is why I have come and asked for bread, and perhaps even a few coins and why everyone so generously gives me their very little. God will give you graces for that. The tiny crowd had gone quiet, though a little girl pushed her way forward and rested her hands on Brother Gerard's knee. So it makes God happy when we give to the brothers. Or to any of his sick and poor. And it makes him happy when you listen to your mothers and fathers. God loves humility. God loves charity. God loves all of the good virtues. Brother Gerard's face seemed to be aglow with heavenly light as he spoke. He loves it when you give a good confession, and he loves it when you pray, and he loves it so much when you ask him for help. But yes, my dear, it makes God happy when you support his church, and that is why the charity of this village is something that us brothers rely on. God is good to us, and he gives us everything that we need. The children all stared at his face, which seemed to be glowing. They stared at his eyes, which glittered with a holy light, and they all rushed forward so that they could lay their hands on his habit. Then please take the buttons off my shirt. And this... Buckle on my shoe. Would Jesus be happy with my blanket? It keeps me very warm, and I think it is very special. The parents gathered round as Brother Gerard spoke, and answered the endless questions, finally pulling their children away so that the brother could rise and pick up his basket. He began the solitary walk back to his monastery, though he was a beaming a very bright smile, thanking God for so beautiful a day.